Pimp Tally Ho, Jules Guides here, in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts about this city. And today we're in Kensington and Chelsea. Let's go check it out. I have to say how much I feel about you. But words alone can't say what's on my mind. I'm quite wondering what these are, these little motifs on here. What does it say? R K C B. Oh, wait a minute. Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea. You know, this was Edward Square, we were just walking around. I, mean, I don't have anything to say about the actual square, we just thought it was very beautiful here. On our way to Eddie Mur uh, <laughs> On our way to uh, Freddie Mercury's house. What made me say Eddie Murphy? No wonder we're so rubbish at tennis in this country. All the grass tennis courts are hidden away in these private gardens. <laughs> this is the street here. It's where Freddie Mercury lived. It's interesting, if you look on uh, Google, Google Maps or, or Google Earth, whatever, I tried to do the street view on Google and I came down this street to see it and uh, all this whole area along here is completely obscured. They, you can't, I think she must have had some deal. Mary Austin, who was Freddie Mercury's wife, um, she inherited this property and uh, she's been living there ever since but she got really sick of all these people coming along and just putting loads of graffiti on her house. And that's the house up there where Freddie Mercury lives. I think he lived with her for 20 years. Amazing. He moved here in 1985, just shortly before he was diagnosed uh, with HIV. And no one knows where he's buried, I don't think. That's why so many fans come down here, because they use it as a shrine. Well, someone must know, but not me. I would not tell you lies and love is in your eyes because of the call for artists after the great exhibition in when was it 1851 these uh, nice artist studios started to pop up around here and some of them are rather charming i think yeah it's kind of um, against the whole romance of the struggling artist isn't it <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> a, a residence in the most expensive estate in the world I'm kind of tempted to go to this pub, it looks rather nice, but just opposite the Devonshire Arms is this excellent fountain, which is set in the wall of the old Kensington Workhouse. And you can tell that it's the old Kensington Workhouse, as it says here, Lord from thy blessed throne, the griefs of earth look upon, God bless the poor, teach them true liberty, make them from strong drink free, let their homes happy be. God bless the poor. Oh, it's actually a poem. I didn't realise. Had I known, I would have tried to read it like a poem. But uh, the only part of the, um, the old workhouse that survives now, apart from this fountain, is the old brick kind of gatehouse entrance further along the road. But they try to keep you as uncomfortable in these workhouses as possible because they didn't want to encourage people to go into them. This would be going in there and you'd do jobs like I don't know, making rope, um, darning, wool. It became St Mary Abbott's Hospital, but then it was completely demolished in 1990. I mean, sometimes you have a whole family in these workhouses, but uh, in order to keep them unhappy, the families were split up. Just, um, this is so cruel, really. The other interesting thing about this road, well, it's interesting to me, is that this is the road in which my mum got married. They didn't have a witness for the wedding, so they just called some woman from over the road. <laughs> and they said, oh, excuse me, could you be our witness? And she went, yeah, all right. And, and they went and got married. And they ended up being friends. That's rather nice, isn't it? I think it might have been in that building there. Looks like it could have been a registrar's registry office or something. She can't remember. My mum's 88. She's forgotten where she got married. <laughs> Must have made quite an impression on her, after all. Oh, Simon, coming up here is the Muffin Man. I used to go there when I was young. It's quite a nice little tea house, this. Nice tea rooms. It always reminds me of the one in With Nail and I. We want cake and fine wines. <laughs> I'm a Susan. This is our time tonight. You make the best of everything. Now, just down here in Stafford Terrace, here, yeah, number 18, is another one of these cute little sort of museums which used to be a house. It's Lindley Sanborn's house and he, he was one of the chief illustrators for Punch magazine back in the end of the 19th century, I believe. Hello. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Julian. Welcome to Lindley Sanborn House. 1870 to 1890 was the aesthetic period or the artistic period and Lindley Sanborn had to go out and buy all his furniture. He didn't inherit a thing. 
and he put it together in this very eclectic, artistic manner. It's a wonderful five-light gasolier, yeah. and the fumes went out of the vent above. Uh, every window along the street has a vent. Oh, and that's what those are for? Yep, to oh. let the gas out. This, in room. fact, was Marion's room. Cook would come up and they would look at her manual of Mrs. Beaton's household keeping oh, okay. and they'd decide on the meals. What's on the menu? Oysters and lemon, julienne soup, sole with mussel sauce, prawns in aspic, pigeon, mutton, vegetables and Russian salad, followed by chocolate pudding. Julienne soup, I like that. Julienne. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> this was the first painting yeah. used to advertise the... A product. Any product? A commercial product. Pear Soap bought the painting, painted a little bar of soap in the right-hand corner. They added that in? They added they? it. <laughs> the little boy grew up to be an admiral and was thereafter called... Admiral Bubbles. <laughs> and Linley worked at the far end. And there he is working at his... Yeah. Down there. When people come here, will they get a tour from somebody or do they just wander around on no, their own? No, they can do both. They can book in for a tour or they can come in the afternoon and wander around on their own. Yeah. There, so when people rang the bell, ding, ding, ding. I suppose yeah. you're not able to ring the bell. Linley went out into the streets and took wonderful photographs with his detective camera. It looks yeah. like I'm taking a picture of you, but in actual fact... Oh, cunning. Saucy old so-and-so. Yes. He's taken a picture of a couple of schoolgirls. Yes. Goodness and me. the headmistress asked him to desist. And this is Mrs. King posing for the bloomer. Good Lord. Look at that. that. Also. Saucy. And this is the eventual cartoon which appeared in Punch. What, you just got her to take her kit off just for the sake of that? Well, I think he thought it would be helpful. And if... <laughs> <laughs> it's artistic, darling. Just yes. take off your clothes. You make the best of every situation You take your chances as they come along Despite Kensington being rather well-to-do and posh, I do actually find parts of it a bit grim, like the High Street. <laughs> so, uh, but just behind here, it's just behind the Church of St Mary Abbots, a beautiful little tranquil square and the gardens where you can hang out. Would you like to know a boring piece of information about this church? This church spire is the tallest in London. What's the difference between a spire and a steeple? Is there, is there a difference? It's actually a Victorian church. It was designed by Sir George Gilbert Scott. Not to be mixed up with Sir Giles Gilbert Scott. He's the guy who did the telephone boxes, but George Gilbert Scott. She was also working on the Albert Memorial quite close by. It's over here, which is now Park Curry's PC World. That, that used to be Kensington Market when I was a kid, when I was a punk, hard to believe. Um, I used to go down there with my sister and we used to go and look for punky type goth clothing items. <laughs> Tie-dye and uh, patchouli smelling. Um, everything smelled patchouli in those days. I don't, I don't know why. I say, Simon, I mean, you see these old uh, these statues up here? They're in sort of typical school charity clothing. So the charity schools, they used to use blue clothes because the blue dye apparently was the cheapest one to get. So these kids who went to these charity schools were always dressed in blue. And you see them dotted around London, these, and uh, they date back to, like, some of them, 16th century. I and you and ye not clothed, clothed. And if you feel it's right, you just get out and find Abba Suzanne. So if you're looking for a bowler hat or top hat or vintage boating blazer, this is this is a I find that they've got quite a few good items in here. Hello there. Hi. How are you doing? This is from you. This is one of yours. Oh, yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at these, you see. Trouble is, you see, the reason I got I had to get a big one, have it altered, but uh, they're quite difficult to find in your size because a lot of them are just for kids, really. I wanted a nice badge on mine. Look, like that. Mm. They've all got badges. Badges. We don't need your stinking badges. There may not be another time, so let us make our plans. Tomorrow always comes too soon to die. Is in our hands. Many
garnet. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Very well. <laughs> what do you sell here? Vintage costume jewellery. There's the garnet. It's my favourite stone. The garnet? Is that your favourite item in the shop? Do you have a favourite? This is the really? Victorian coming of age purse, it's called. A coming of age? Where the grandmother or mother gave the daughter when they were 18 or 21. Oh, excellent. Wow, how old is that? Victorian. So how long have you worked here for? 26 years. 26 years? What, so since you were about 10 years old? <laughs> what? I guess so. <laughs> Do you get, ever get any famous people coming? That's so I'm talking about Princess Diana. She's not with us Princess anymore. Diana? Yes. Well, she used to come in here? Yes. Really? I mean, she, she only used to live around the corner, I suppose. Yes, she lives down the road in Kensington Palace. And this was her famous road for walking down. She's come she around. Yeah, yes. The wall where she sat on over there all the time, for hours sometimes. Really? Looking very sad, unfortunately. <laughs> Boys used to run up and down this wall on their way to McDonald's. William and, uh, yeah. and Harry? Yes. Ate at McDonald's? Yes. <laughs> it's hard to be. <laughs> Everyone knew that. Really? All of us knew that. Oh, really? And they used to run up and down these walls? Yes. Oh, I suppose they would. Very sweet. Oh, that's no so cool. No one bothered them. That's why they came here. Just imagine Prince Harry and Prince William running along this wall. So cool. Da, 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 da. They never get into <laughs> each other's arms. Oh, look, talk of the devil. The man himself. Oh, what it might have been. Oh, deco, is it, do you think? Uh, actually, just at the bottom of that building is, is St. Michael German Antiques. That, that shop over there with the canopy. That's where I got this oh, stick. Green yeah, there. and I think... Oh. It's excellent, and I think he actually provides lots of props for movies as well. Let's go and ask him. Hello. Hello there, I'm welcome. <laughs> we deal in three things primarily. Antique walking canes, which are great fun, a fashion accessory of the Victorian period. We deal in arms and armour, and we also deal in maritime objects to do with the sea, and also Nelson and Trafalgar, our great sea hero. This is my current favourite, because he's a little polar bear, and I just think he's absolutely darling. Excellent. And also with him, what makes him special is that when you hold the cane itself, you can still see his head, whereas many of them, you know, once you've held them, you've hidden them. Oh yeah, so that's, that's true that's actually. A nice feature. Crossbow, a longbow? Yeah, that's a crossbow. You've got a, it's what's called a birding bow, actually. So that doesn't fire a bolt, it fired a, a stone. It wasn't for fighting people, that was for hunting. Where did you get all this stuff from? <laughs> well, that's the hard part. We worked very, very hard to find it. And we search all over the world, but we're very lucky still here in the UK to be able to find most of our things from within our shores. Now that, unless I'm very much mistaken, is Beau Brummel. Ten points. Yes, Ten come on. Points. Now I bet you've done one of your marvellous videos has been on for Burlington Arcade. Yes. That is the original maquette that was made for that statue, Arena Sturzlecker. Sadly she died and the contents of her studio was sold and this is where I managed to buy this. The reason we bought him of course is because he is such a great advocate okay, of a cane carrier or yes. what I would call an ambulist. It's somebody who walks with a cane. An ambulist. Walks with a cane as opposed to being aided by a cane. And in this period these canes were purely for fashion. Wait a minute, Agincourt? Have is that? That, that is yeah. Agincourt, yeah. Wow. That is an incredible thing. How about that? 1415. What's he that wishes so? My cousin Westmoreland. No, fair cousin. I'm still doing Shakespeare. Well, there you are. Quite oh. right. But there he is in the front. That's Henry V here. There he is. Um, uh, attacking the French. It's not old. It's not an antique. It was commissioned, we think, in about 1970. A fine 16th century German codpiece. Uh, unusual uh, attribute of being upwardly pointing. <laughs> Most of them da point downwards. Ah. Halbard. Halbard. And they're about the earliest things in the shop. Some of those date from about 1500. That uh, piece in the corner there is an original piece of HMS Victory's sailcloth mm. from, the, from the flagship. From the flagship. Oh, that, that's so cool! This is a, a coaching blunderbuss, so it was used uh, whenever you travelled, which is when you were most at risk from uh, highwaymen who would be there to rob you. So you would travel armed and equipped and your coachman on top of your coach would have these long blunderbusses which fired shot 
from a short range, so you have one shot, and then if you missed, you were really done for. But in this case, they've got something called a bayonet, which is particularly effective. Now, if you watch carefully, so you've shot a miss, then you've got this lovely lever on the top. If I pull this, Oi! you've got a beefy bayonet there. Have it. To Steady sort on, them chat. out. Yeah. <laughs> well, there we are. So you can <laughs> Blue, see. Don't point guns at people yeah, with now. Yeah, Can I get out of this? Is it locked? We have to let you out. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll let you out and let you in. Oh, okay. <laughs> See ya. I'm a Susan. This is our time tonight. I'm a Susan. Oh, look up here. You get a nice shot here of London's most expensive street. Loads of embassies, uh, oligarchs, <laughs> millionaires, billionaires. The Sultan of Brunei has a place up here. Also, Bernie Eccleston used to live up here. I think he bought his house, I don't know, did he sell it for something like 33 million or something, to 59 million? He, he lived down here with his wife, Slavica, who was like a, a Croatian model. And um, she didn't like it. She said it wasn't good enough for her, so uh, they had to move out. No pleasing some people, is there? You know? Susan, this is our time tonight. Please, uh, of listed buildings, these cabman shelters. And I'm not going to go into all the details again because I've already got a video about cabman shelters. But uh, this one famously is the one where Benny Hill used to come in here because he used to live around the corner and also Winston Churchill. And normally you have to be a taxi driver in order to go into one. But uh, I mean, who's turning away Winston Churchill? I mean, so he did actually get accepted. I don't believe he drove a cab, but he did used to come in here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he may have. Around this area here, back in Victorian times, there was a fella called Baron Albert Grant, who had more money than sense, they say, and he built a hundred-room marble palace around here. I think eventually he went bankrupt and they had to knock it down, and this other fella, Jonathan Carr, came along, he's a property developer, and he decided to build Kensington Court, which is all around us here, all these um, incredible red brick buildings. They didn't want to waste all the stuff from it, so the marble staircase, you can actually still see that in Madame Two Swords. They, they, they sold it and they, they took it up there. Um, and is it Richmond Park that has the, the gates, the, 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 the kind of the entrance gates, are now at the front of Richmond Park, apparently. This is the old pump house, and that used to be uh, a Jonathan Carr, who was the guy who, uh, who built all these, uh, the whole of Kensington Court here. He wanted a cheap, quiet alternative to the steam-powered lifts or elevators. And so this pump house pumped water all the way from the Thames. And it's the first time that an independent hydraulic system had been used to power domestic houses in Britain. Tomorrow always comes too soon is in a house. I'm gonna wake up to Oh now this fella here, Colonel Crompton, um, he was the, the engineer that lived here. Um, and he also invented the electric toaster. I think he developed it here. Well enough. Yeah. And it was one of the first housing developments in the world to have its own permanent electricity. Each house had its own rechargeable battery or something and it would charge it up every day. Um, and this one around here, you can just see the, uh, where the electricity station was, actually. I want to hold you in my arms again Life brings on the day We go our separate ways I'm a Susan, this is our time tonight Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Cheers, Simon. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, you can check out JulesGuys.com if you want to book a guided tour or find out more about me. And, uh, and don't forget to subscribe to my Instagram as well. Cheers. See you next time. Bye.